Hey, welcome back. Welcome to another tutorial. This time we're going to go with gizmos. Gizmos are the um, UI that you see when you select something with the dev tooltip. So we have some primitives here. We've got a box, we've got a sphere, we've got a cone, we've got a piece of text. We also have a light up there that already got a gizmo um, loaded in, but we'll take a look at that one later. Um, so when you secondary select something, you get the pink box around it, and you get the uh, arrows, and these buttons above, and the name of the item box. This is all part of what's called a gizmo. To talk about a gizmo a little bit easier, I actually have a baked gizmo here. So a gizmo is um, a 3D mesh, so you can kind of bake it using the bake tool. This isn't interactable, but it's easier to sort of show what a gizmo is when it's not actually a gizmo. And I know that doesn't make sense, but do bear with me. Um, so you'll see it's comprised of um, the center part here, which is a pivot or the uh, origin point. Uh, see my previous video on pivots for that one if you're interested in uh, how to configure those. Um, some handles, so there's the blue one, the green one, and the red one. Um, these squares here, the uh, yellow, uh, cyan, and magenta. And then this row of buttons above. And then also these um, yellow dots around the edge and the purple grid itself. And by interacting with all of these objects in various ways, we can actually change properties about the object and sort of maneuver it within the world and change its relation in the world co compared to other things. We're going to get started with the box here and just go over a few of the simple ones that you've probably already used, but it's good to go over them. So when you select something by default, it'll start in what's called translate mode, and that's where the um, arrows are... Um, topped with an, sort of an arrow point, like a, like a natural arrow. And here you can sort of move an object up and down, left and right, and forwards and back. You notice here that I'm flying periodically away from the box, and that's because the arrow will um, get larger the further away you are from it. This allows you to kind of move items at, at scale, and it also allows you to kind of see those items better when the um, arrows are inside. You can also go up inside the object, find the arrow, and then pull it along that way. I sometimes do that as well. You also see these uh, squares, the cyan, uh, magenta, and uh, yellow squares here. If you grab these, you'll move them on a diagonal. So here, I'm moving it diagonally, um, left and right and up and down at the same time. But I can't move it forwards and back. And so you can do that with the other um, di uh, square here, so the magenta one. And that'll let me move it um, forward and back, but not up and down. Returning to the top here, you can go along one, and you'll see there's a kind of circle here, a gyroscope. Click this one, this is the rotation gizmo. And you can move it along the Z, the X, and the Y axis when you're rotating it. Uh, again here, you can go inside and you can grab these if it helps. That's rotation. Next one along is scale. Scale here is the same as translate, but it's a box on the end of the um, on the end of the lines rather than an arrowhead. And this is scale. So if I grab the green one, you'll see it scales it up and down, forwards and backwards. Uh, sorry, left and right, and then forwards and backwards here as well. There is no uh, sign of magenta box here. You have to scale them all individually. Uh, if you want to scale all three axes at the same time, you can use this white square in the middle. And you'll see here that this is going to scale it out. I'm stuck inside it, though, due to where I grabbed it from. So let me come outside and then, then see that a lot more easier. There we go. So that's the three, um, I call them the red, uh, green, and uh, blue buttons. We've got uh, translate, rotate, and scale. There are other buttons around it, and you'll see um, that they sometimes aren't clear. So there's one on the end here, which is just nothing inside it, and there's one on the other end here, which is nothing inside it as well. Um, some of them, I don't know what they do, because they're not apparent what they do. But I think this one on the end here, nope, this one here, the second to last one, it re-enables that green um, stretchiness that I showed you. So that's a good way of re-enabling that on a box if you want to. This one on the end will change how you're translating it. So if I were to rotate this at a really weird angle, so we're going to go that way a bit, and we're going to go that way a bit, and then we go back to the uh, translation, you'll see that the translation handles have now moved to reflect the object's rotation. If 
I change this so it's in circle mode, you'll see that the translation gizmo now returns back to world um, orientation. So you can think of this as sort of a global translate um, operator or a local translate operator for those handles. So in circle or globe, it's the world, and then in square, it's local. So in um, local here, you'll see the green arrow is now sort of the weird diagonal, and the red is another weird diagonal. Change it back to globe, and it's up and down, forwards and backwards, as we just saw. This arrow on, uh, here is more applicable when you have a hierarchy going. So if I were to do the following, where we have now two boxes that are slightly further apart, so that just so we can see the difference here. If I select this box here, and then I push that orange up, up arrow, you'll see we're now on the box parent. So what we've done here is we've jumped up from the box down here to the parent, and we can then use that as a gizmo. That's useful for um, things like video players. So if I create a uh, video player, which is here, this won't play an actual video, um, it's just a blank player. If I select this with my dev tool tip in the middle, you'll see it selects the frame of the video player. But what if, and that will just move the, the um, gold back. Before I don't want to move the entire video player, I can up arrow this once, and now I'm moving the whole video player. Moving on, once certain objects have different um, gizmos, so a sphere, for example, um, it has all the same that we just went over, but the second to last button here will redo that green um, drag area that exists on spheres when they're first spawned in. Much like the green um, uh, on the green box on the box, uh, it lets you kind of drag it in and out a little bit. I'm not sure what the difference between this one and the uh, scale is, because that's what it's uh, realistically doing. Although it might actually be changing the radius rather than the actual scale, so let's go double check that one. Yeah, that's what's happening. So you see here, when I'm doing this, the radius here on the sphere mesh is changing, but the scale isn't. Whereas if I use the scale operator, this number's changing at the top here. I see that, the scale. So go back to the green one, and it's changing the radius. That's it for the sphere. I'm not sure if the cone has any special. We'll just uh, take a look. It doesn't, like I said, I don't know what that end one does. I think Coffee told me once, but I've forgotten. It's something to do with colliders or the mesh itself. Uh, it's not applicable for primitives, at least. For text, there is, um, uh, when you spawn in a text, you'll see this T icon here, and you can click that, and then you can type some text. But then when you hit enter, or when you select it with the dev tool tip, that option goes away. And then you may think, well, I spelt that wrong, and that doesn't read what I wanted it to say. To edit that, you might be tempted to do the following operation, where you select it, you open it in the inspector, you find the text property, and then you edit it there. But that's a bit slow. What you can actually do is select it, hit this end button here, and it will re-pop open that text editor, and then you can do hello. That's a super useful tip that saved me a lot of time. Uh, for example, on my tab system, um, which allows you to do tabs, I use it um, to change the name of the tab quite easy. So you see here, when I select the center of the tab, it selects the text on the tab. And so here, I can rename this to be, say, tab two, and the whole UI uh, changes, and I haven't really even opened an inspector there. Next up is lights. You'll see that the light here has the inspector, or uh, sorry, the gizmo already. And you can see here that I can move this directional light around. It's not enabled right now, so if I enable it, you'll see it actually works. Now, if we look at over at those uh, shapes that we made, you'll see here that we've got that going on like that. I can also turn on uh, hard shadows or soft shadows, so now you'll see there's uh, shadows, there's me as a shadow down there, hard shadows, and again there's me as a hard shadow. You also change the type of light, so if you do point light, you'll now see this very big UI um, that appears. This is much like the sphere one, in that it's changing various properties about the lights. So when you do this, it's changing the range. I think these all just change the range, actually. Let's double check what property it changes by opening it in the inspector and taking a look. So here we can find the, uh, where are we, light. Should be another light. 
Is it that light? No, that's directional. That's called directional. There we go. So open that back up again. And now we're in point light. There we go. Ah, so yes, it's changing the range of the light. If you change this to uh, spotlight, you'll see you'll get this cone. This cone, again, uh, changes properties about the light. So you can drag the spotlight around a bit. Here you'll see this is the spot angle, because I can make the angle of the light bigger and smaller. And I can also, I think it's the center here, the center peg. I can drag that outwards, and that changes the range. So if I drag that from this, uh, I got the, uh, again, there we go. You see that changes the range. Additionally, you saw it there, um, but I'll go over it just again, which is if you select a uh, light, this one's called directional, you'll see it's got a standard gizmo, but there's also an option on the end, which looks like a sun. When you click that, you get this interface and you can do all those options again. There's also a settings button here, which pops open a super useful box, which means you don't need to go into the inspector to change things like colors or the intensity. I'm not quite sure what happened there, but we'll just go back to the light. Oh yeah, close the inspector, sometimes that happens. Uh, give me the light. Let's do that again. Settings, there we go. So you don't need to, uh, usually you don't need to... Oh, I see, it's when it's deselected. Let's open that settings menu one more time. So here I can change the intensity, also the color. the shadows, etc. Let me just turn off the main world light. And now you'll see that we've got, uh, back to the directional again. You'll see here that we've again got the uh, red light going on here. Also change the shadow strength. You can go for a, a blue light if you want. That's it for uh, gizmos. There are other gizmos that may appear from time to time. I'm not familiar with all of them. Those are the ones that I was most familiar with. I'd like to thank uh, Hamish from SHFR for requesting this tutorial. I gave it to him live in Australia, um, and then when I came back, lots of stuff happened, so I haven't had time to actually record it and put it up to uh, YouTube. But here it is. I uh, hope it's useful. There are a couple of things there that even I didn't know. I kind of just sort of pushed buttons until I figured out what happened. Um, so thank you for bearing with me, and I hope this helps you. Uh, let me know what you think, and I'll see you next time.